Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today, I have Mikhail Tal, who was a Soviet chess player and the 8th world chess champion, he is considered a creative genius and widely regarded as one of the most influential players in chess history, today, I played against him and showcased our brilliance in this chess game, we have Mikhail Tal AI, which plays in Mikhail Tal's style, so stay tuned until the end of the video, I started the game with d4. Tal's heir played knight f6, and after c4, he played e6, later on, he opted for the Nimtso Indian defense, where e3 was considered, here, I had many options to consider, such as queen c2, knight to f3 or developing the bishop to the d3 square, from black's perspective, he could consider d5 b6 c5, or castling, Mikhail Tal chose to play c5, and after the bishop moved, he immediately played d5, attacking the pawns. He is likely following lines used by top chess engines, after the exchanges, I played knight to e2, you might be shocked and wonder why I played knight to e2 instead of knight to f3, I chose this because Tal would likely play bishop to g4, pinning my knight, that's why I played knight to e2, after castling, I could now play f3, pushing my pawns forward, and you can see how my pieces would advance, after the knight moved and the exchanges occurred, I immediately considered f3 because later on, I could play e4 and knight to f4, pushing my pawns on g4, h4, and g5, how would Mikhail Tal defend this position? Tal is known for his creativity, especially when playing with the black pieces, so let's see how he showcases his genius. A few moves later, I even considered g4, pushing the pawn, while Tal played rook to a2, rook to g2 was also possible, and you could see how my pawns were advancing, with a new version of short piece 17, I'm just soaring, as if I'm skydiving, climbing mountains, or driving under the ocean and bungee jumping, all these moves were made with my new version, when I played g5, Tal's position became very cramped. He might have been pleased to see this move because the pawn on g5 was attacked by three pieces, but he didn't capture it, Tal, being a genius, often sacrifices a piece or move, with the results showing many moves later, that's why he wasn't interested in the g5 pawn, but if you're curious about what would happen if he were, let me show you, I would capture the knight on the h7 square, forcing the king to move, and after capturing, check. Rook to g2 would arrive, you might wonder why I put my rook on a2 many moves ago, but you'll soon see that I was thinking like Tal, where the bishop is wide open, and the queen can go to h4, trying to checkmate the black king. After a few more moves, we would exchange knights, and queen to e1 would arrive, threatening the king on h4, the king would move, trying to escape the attacks, after the king moved, rook to h1 would arrive, forcing another check, even if the king moves to f7, I could play a move like Mikhail Tal against Tal himself. Can you guess what I would play? The move is rook takes g7, just wonderful. After sacrificing the rook, rook to g1 would follow. At this point, many players might think of retreating the king, but that would be a mistake because my queen would go to h8, leading to checkmate, the only option would be to block with the bishop, but I would capture it, after several checks, the king would be forced to run, and eventually, there would be no more squares left. Tal would be checkmated within 20 moves. His soul needs to rest in peace. Going back to the position, Tal brilliantly played g6, not capturing the pawn, as many would expect in his games, after e4, the pawn is attacked but also protected by the bishop, after capturing on g5 and subsequent recaptures, the bishop has a wide open diagonal, but the king is exposed. That doesn't matter, though, because I have rook to h2, after a few more moves, with the knight retreating and a4 played, Tal responded with knight to c6, a very shocking move. It was as shocking as a 200 volt current running through your nervous system, why did Tal play this move? I could simply play d5, attacking both the knight and the bishop at the same time. Doesn't Tal realize that my pawn on d5 can attack both pieces? But I'm not focused on the pawn, 
the sequence of moves will become clear after a few moves, I played knight to e2, many players might think about retreating the knight to a7 to protect against e5, but I would then play d5, forcing the bishop to move back, then, I would consider e5, activating my two central pawns, how would you protect your position? Even the queen would be helpless after e6. Pawn takes e6, bishop takes g6 would follow, attacking the rook, the rook would have to move, or I'd take it, if the rook moves, rook to g1 would arrive, with the idea of discovering a check on the black king. Tal's position would crumble. So, let me share a deep motivational quote for you. You'll meet many storms along the journey to success, your job isn't to avoid them, but rather to weather them as you wait for the sun to shine on your path once more. Returning to the idea of knight to a7, it's clear that Tal avoided it, Tal smiled, lit a cigarette, put on his black sunglasses, and played a signature move, can you guess what Tal played? 1 2 3, go. The move Tal played was often seen in his games, he sacrificed a piece on d4. Although he had some disadvantages, he was still capable of sacrificing a piece, what a beautiful and creative decision. It was, without a doubt, the best move Tal could have played. After the capture, queen takes, and after h3, Tal's idea became clear, he was trying to connect his pawns and create a new queen, Tal's brilliance is fascinating, but he didn't realize that I'm smarter than many grandmasters, perhaps even 1000 Mikhail Tal's, I could play the powerful and strongest move, knight takes e6, sacrificing the knight, after the capture rook takes h3 would arrive, attacking the knight, Mikhail Tal's position became very difficult because his sacrifice gave him nothing. After the queen moved to f6, I played bishop to c3, attacking the queen along this diagonal. If the queen moves to the e7 square, I can play queen g3, and later on, I can even sacrifice my rook in Mikhail Tal's style, whether black wins or I win doesn't matter, Mikhail Tal's win is guaranteed because I am playing like Mikhail Tal, and the black heir is also playing like Mikhail Tal. It's named Mikhail Tal's AI, and after the check, the game will be over, just like in Mikhail Tal's style. Going back to the original position, the queen cannot move, therefore, Mikhail Tal played a very cunning move, he sacrificed his rook on the d1 square and then captured the bishop on c3, his rook sacrifice was a tempo, and a few moves later, you can see that we were just maneuvering, attacking the pawn and, after moving to h5, attacking the knight, a few moves later, we exchanged pieces, and this position became completely winnable for me, by the end of the game, with the grace of Mikhail Tal. I was able to defeat Mikhail Tal's AA. After the exchanges, I even checkmated him a few moves later, I hope you enjoyed the game, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye take care and see you soon.